All right, so we joke a lot about millennials living in their parents' basements, but you know, eventually they got to get out, right? Well, many signs suggest that 2020 will see a big shift. I mean, we got low interest rates, higher wages, and plus they're growing older. It looks like the perfect combination for a millennial housing boom. Here to weigh in, uh, DiBianchi Real Estate, uh, Samantha DiBianchi. Uh, you know, so here's my thing. I'm looking at the data. I'm looking at the, the enthusiasm for prospective buyers, National Association of Home Builders optimism, uh, housing permits. It just feels like the data suggests that maybe finally, uh, you know, the, the, the millennials are moving past, you know, just the, the, the hanging out at mom's and getting their own place. Am I wrong? Well, there's nothing wrong with hanging out at mom's. I like to hang out at mom's, have her meatballs, you know, but I also own a lot of property. I think when we well, talk about... Well, you hang about out at mom's, but then leave and go to your own place? I do. But I actually rent my primary, but I own nine homes. And what I do is I rent all of those homes out. They pay for my primary, which I rent. And then it also puts money in my pocket. And I think that trend will continue on in 2020 for a lot of millennials because there are two very different types of millennials. There are millionaire millennials, which make up over 600,000 Americans. And then there's everyone else because millennials range from 23 to close to 40 years in age. That's a wide span. That's yeah. two very different types of people. But it doesn't matter where you are. There's great news in housing. Mortgage rates are right now set to still be in the threes. You know, we saw 3.5% for a 30-year fix, and they're set to continue to be in the threes, maybe the fours. And housing, again, like you said, housing starts permitting activity. Everything is going in the right direction. You know, Samantha, it felt, though, like for a while, even with low interest rates, the needle wasn't moving. Is there something that's happening now, maybe really good wage growth compared, like beating inflation now, your rate, wages rising, and, and plus just maybe the other factor, just people getting older, whatever it is. But it feels like there's something different than even a year ago when rates were still low. Well, I will say that today's buyer, no matter who they are, millennial or not, they're a lot more educated. So, again, when people see these home prices go up and up and up, which in 2020, they're not projected to go up as much as they had in years past, maybe anywhere from 2 to 5%. Some predictions actually say they'll go down. So what does that say? That says nobody really knows it's going to happen. But overall, rates are good. Home prices are not going to go crazy. So it might motivate some people. But at the same time, because today's buyer is so much more educated, if it doesn't make sense to buy to put that 20% down, they will stay in their home and rent. Because let's take San Francisco, where a one-bedroom, right, right. 3600 a month. That it's insane. The median price point, though, is $1.3 million. So it actually makes more sense to rent there. But that doesn't mean those people but are going to not. you never save the money for a house, right? I mean, well, you get caught in a rent trap thing kind of thing. Rents go up faster than... Right. But here's the difference. These people might rent for 3600 but then they'll go and buy in different markets. So that's why when we talk about mm. everyone's buying, nobody's buying, we always think, oh, primary home. But in reality, just because they're not buying their primary doesn't mean that they're not buying elsewhere. I'm seeing returns of over 10 percent in other markets, cities in Alabama, cities in Tennessee. So maybe, yeah, I don't want to buy in California for my primary, but I can still have the benefits that's of a great home point. ownership. That's a great point. Being an investor. I was thinking about Birmingham just the other day. I've got to ask you about this quickly because you're uh, you're an expert in real estate. You're from Florida. And Brini Breeze is a 43 acre community in Palm Beach County. And apparently uh, there's a Florida man who wants to sell a whole town to Trump. <laughs> OK, saying one billion dollars. You got a whole town. Do what you want. Is it more than just a gimmick? It sounds pretty cool to me. I mean, I would love to be the listing agent. Call me. <laughs> uh, you know, that'd be a nice little 3%, 6%, whatever it is. Is it a gimmick? I mean, look, it's a great PR stunt. If I could get something like that and, and put it out there, that'd be phenomenal. Could it happen? 100% it could happen. Anything can happen in the world of real estate. If there's anything I can tell you, there, the possibilities in real estate are endless. Are endless. Sam Mathis, <laughs> great having you in studio. Thank you. All right, see you soon.